Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we have with us uh, Mr. Yashwan Sinha, uh, Chairman of Parliamentary Standing Committee on Finance and, and indeed former Finance Minister who will uh, speak to us on, on the state of economic reforms uh, uh, in our country and uh, in particular uh, the relationship between uh, the BJP and Congress in implementation of this, these reforms uh, and I'm saying this because uh, BJP indeed has uh, has a key uh, role to play in seeing uh, some of the reforms through. Uh, welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Yashwan Sinha. Uh, now, you have been very closely been associated with some of the uh, key reforms as chairman of uh, uh, Parliamentary Standing Committee um, that the government is trying to uh, bring. And uh, the government recently announced uh, the, a, a number of uh, key legislative changes in the financial sector in particular. Uh, Quite apart from that, uh, sir, BJP has been talking about uh, reforms uh, in a more political context of late and uh, has been talking about what sort of reforms would be acceptable to the people. Now, could you tell me uh, if there is a change in BJP's uh, uh, position in regard to reforms uh, or the political economy of reforms? I wouldn't say there has been a change. <clears throat> Even when we were in government, you would have noticed that while we pushed economic reforms, we sought to make economic reforms more people-centric. For instance, uh, economic growth must translate into job opportunities. Economic growth and economic policy must touch the lives of people, especially the poor people especially the people living in the rural areas. So, while we did a lot of, uh, let's say, capital market reforms or financial sector reforms or infrastructure reforms, we did not forget the village communities. And that's why we started a scheme like Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadaki Yojana. That's why I started a scheme like the Kisan Credit Card. That's why we laid emphasis on watershed management and created a national mission for watershed management, gave um, a lot of encouragement to the agricultural sector. So the whole idea was to create uh, or, or, or devise forms of reform which will touch the lives of the people. Because most people in this country would not have any interest in whether the Bombay stock market is going up or going down, because they have not made investments. But inflation, for instance, price rise, which is the, um, the worst kind of uh, after effect of inflation, that is a very critical issue for them. Sure. And I can take credit for the fact that realizing this, we spared the people of India the scourge of inflation no, in our time. Okay. So these were uh, the issues to which also we paid attention. Today also we are emphasizing these people-centric issues that the economic reforms should and must appear to be touching the lives of ordinary people. Otherwise, you know, if you consider uh, you know, a reduction in subsidy as a reform, it's debatable, but raising diesel prices, raising petrol prices, raising all administered prices, if that is considered to be reform, why will people accept it? If they, f they are not seeing the upside of it, they are not seeing the advantage for them in this, they will not accept So what if you are the finance minister, sir, how would you deal with the, the uh, burgeoning subsidies? Uh, it's, it's really become back-breaking today. I'll tell you what uh, needed to be done. You'll recall that I had set up an expenditure reforms commission. And the effort was to do away with uh, superfluous or surplus posts. The effort was to reduce government expenditure. You reduce the size of the government, is it? Size of the government and government expenditure, <coughs> which could be considered to be wasteful. <coughs> and expenditure policy was a very important part of our economic policy. I am sorry to say that for the last eight, nine years, we haven't seen any expenditure policy being pronounced in uh, any of the budgets. that so we have failed on the expenditure side. We, we have failed. Now, 
in order to make uh, the hard, uh, you know, the bitter medicine acceptable to the people, the hard decisions of the government, you must be able to appear to be subjecting yourself also to that hard decision. You know, the, the government cannot say it is business as usual. Continue with the waste in government and Im go on imposing burden on the people. That will not be accepted. Sure, sure. Because the, you're right. There is a view that you can make people pay more for LPG cylinders, uh, provided uh, the rich who drive uh, diesel uh, uh, vehicles, SUVs, they, they should first pay market prices before you ask the uh, relatively poorer to pay yes, more, yes. Uh, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so so that is why, you know, we have to look at ways and means of targeting subsidies so that the poor get the benefit, the rich and the well-to-do do not get them. Sir, where would you place, say, FDI and multi-brand retail in the context of people centricity? Because the political class is divided uh, on whether this would uh, help the farmers uh, or whether they hurt the farmers. BJP itself uh, earlier had uh, supported this as something which might help the people, farmers at large. But why this confusion today? Uh, we, you know, I like to tell you that we had indeed toyed with the idea of bringing uh, FDI in retail. But when we realized, as in other sectors also, that this will not be acceptable to the people, we gave up the idea. So you got the feedback from below? We got the feedback and then we felt that it will not uh, be acceptable and then we abandoned this. There were a number of instances. So you went through a series of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. feedback uh, exercises? Yeah, I mean, so we cannot be accused of having taken the decision. No, we did not take the decision. And when you are in government or even otherwise, you look at various ideas. Looking at ideas is not a sin. No, it's not. I, I agree with you. So you, you've been redefining your... Yes. So, I mean, I'll give you the example. Before we came into office in 1998, the BJP was opposed to... Uh, foreign direct investment in the insurance sector. Yeah, yeah. In government, as you'll recall, we changed our view. Yeah, yeah. We felt that foreign direct investment in insurance will be useful and we took that decision. Yeah, yeah. So, looking at an idea, examining an idea is not a sin as is being project projected today. Yeah. That there was a note prepared, there was this, that and the other. No, no, you're, you're free to change your position, yeah, yes, always. Yes. Yeah. And coming back to the basic uh, issue that you raised, about FDI and retail, you know, the point which is may, being made by the representatives of the government is with regard to the back-end operations, yeah, yeah. which will be useful to the farmers. Now, the counter, uh, the reply to that that I gave is that you have permitted 100% foreign direct investment through the automatic route in the food processing industry. 100% through the automatic route. You were expecting that by the end of the 11th plan, you would receive something like $25 billion worth of uh, foreign direct investment in this sector. You have ended up getting something like $300 million. Absolutely, nothing has happened. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Now, now so back-end operation, why isn't back the foreign investor taking advantage of the back-end operation? So you're saying, why, why hasn't this happened? Why hasn't this happened? Sure, sure. It's, it's a very valid question. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come to this question, uh, but after a small break, uh, uh, please don't go away and uh, stay with us. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a very interesting conversation with the former Finance Minister, Mr. Yashwan Sinha. Sir, you were talking about uh, evolving position on reforms, which is very valid. Now, as regards uh, FDI and retail, uh, we had uh, with the BJP President, uh, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, uh, in our office, and he, he told us, and we've carried a story in Financial Express today, uh, that uh, there's a breakdown in trust uh, and Mr. Gatkari said that BJP feels betrayed by by the ruling uh, UPA uh, because they 
did not consult the BJP enough on uh, on FDI and multi-brand retail before actually announcing it uh, in the way it was announced. Uh, uh, and he said, uh, following that, BJP is not in a mood uh, to cooperate with the government on any other uh, reforms uh, that the government uh, recently announced uh, as part of reviving the overall sentiment. Uh, so do you, how do you read this? No, this is what Mr. Gadkari has said is the party position. Uh, FDI and retail is one example where uh, the then leader of the House, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee, had announced in Lok Sabha that all stakeholders will be consulted, including the political parties. The similar, a similar announcement was made in the Rajya Sabha by Mr. Anand Sharma. Now, the government didn't consult anyone, much less the opposition, I mean, not only the opposition parties, even their allies. So, this was a betrayal of one kind. The other example which I'd like to give you is that of the pension sector. As far as the pension bill is concerned, we had examined it in the standing committee. We had submitted a report. Then Mr. Pranam Mukherjee um, held a meeting with us and we told him that we will stand by the standing committee's report. And you will recall that the pension bill would not have been, the government would not have been able to introduce the pension, pension bill in Lok Sabha without our support because they were in a minority and we came out in their support. This is often conveniently forgotten by government and by others that we actually supported the government. Yeah. Yeah. And then we examined the bill. Mr. Pranam Mukherjee agreed to our suggestions. 100% he said, I'll accept them. You know, he even sent his joint secretary to sit down with me and work out the draft amendment. Yeah, you told me earlier that he did. I have told you this. You. Yes. And everything was done. Now, we find that the cabinet now has decided that we will increase foreign direct investment in uh, pension sector to 49%. Again, no consultation with us. So, the point I am making is that forget all other things. In pol the politics of India, in our parliamentary system, you cannot be choosing when you want our support and when you don't want our support. So, if you, this, this uh, cooperation has to be broad-based. It cannot be at the whims and caprices of the government. So, we'll find it very difficult in today's environment to support the government either on FDI and retail or on any of the uh, pension insurance bills. Or, or the banking regulation. Or, or the banking bill. regulation bill. And I like to make an additional point. You know, <clears throat> the standing committees of parliament, as you know, are all party committees. There we take decisions by consensus. And on all these three, we have taken decisions by consensus and we have given a report. On pension, insurance and, and banking. banking. Right, right, right. Yes. And why? Because the world has changed. Every member of the committee felt that, you know, the, in economic terms, the world can be divided into AC and BC. What is BC before the crisis? AC is after the crisis. You know, after the 2008 crisis and the continuing crisis in Europe, we cannot look at the financial sector with the same... Uh, the same prism as before. As, as before. And this was the considered view of the committee. BJP agrees with the views that the committee has expressed. And that is why we are saying we should not take the risk. And we should keep it confined to 26% for the time being. For the time being, okay. So are you sir, therefore saying that it will be futile if uh, the present finance minister uh, tries to reach out to the opposition in a bit to... Uh, to push some of these uh, legislations because uh, changes in some of the legislation because he did say two weeks ago that he would make a very serious and earnest uh, effort to reach out. Now, from what you are saying, it it appears to me that 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 exercise will not yield anything. This exercise will be futile. But I'll give you another example. Take the case of GST. I had um, worked very fast on GST in the committee, and the my 
intention was that we should submit the report on GST in the monsoon session of parliament which has gone yeah. by. Yeah, you, you had also, you are working yeah. to a deadline. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now just before the monsoon session, we had sent uh, a questionnaire to the Ministry of Finance and we said please reply to these questions. Then we will have a final round up, a wrap up session with you. They delayed sending the reply. We received the reply uh, towards in the perhaps in the middle of the uh, monsoon session and then there was no time because the committee's term was coming to an end by the end of August. That's where it remained. But now what is happening to GST? On GST, the finance minister, I learned from uh, the media, not uh, directly from the Ministry of Finance, that he has opened a channel with the empowered group of state finance ministers. Sure, yeah. Fine. Now he is saying that we are re-looking at the whole thing. Partha Sarthi Shom, who is uh, emerged as the advisor on taxation of the government, is saying that this model of GST is not right. Okay. Now, is there a rethinking on GST within the government? We don't know. And that is why... So you are saying that there is some confusion as to... Complete, complete confusion. What, is the, what are the new elements they are introducing yes, in the GST? Yes, yes. And we have therefore written to the government from the Secretariat of the Committee to tell us what your latest thinking is. Okay. You know, we can't go on uh, uh, sitting and in uh, on the legislation and uh, then submitting our report without knowing what the government's view is. Okay. And I'll further supplement it by telling you what is the fate of the DTC, the Direct Access Code Bill. I mean, is this the way the government should function? That they introduce a legislation, it comes to the standing committee, we examine it, send our report back, and they set up the Partha Sarthi Shom Committee to sit in judgment over the committee's report or whatever. And then the... Uh, so, uh, so the what you're saying is that suppose they... There, there is, is no end GST, to thinking. Suppose on GST they, they come back to you saying that this is the broad framework slightly amended that we're looking at. W would you be okay with, the, with that? No, I can't, I can't say that because I'll have to put it across to the committee members. Mm -hmm. But the point I'm making is to you which is the fundamental point. You're saying that the goalposts are shifting. Is, no, there is a complete shift in economic policy from the time Pranam Mukherjee was the finance minister okay. and now. Okay. It seems as if the whole government has changed. Only the finance minister has changed. Mm -hmm. And the point which I have made repeatedly is that no important decision can be taken by the finance minister mm -hmm. without the fullest approval of the prime minister. So the Prime Minister was alright with the GAR chapter in the budget, in the finance bill. But GAR too, you had also, some of your demands have been met in, in GAR, right? You were saying that... No, no, they have not been. You see, it was even before the report of the committee could be considered that the then Finance Minister introduced the GAR chapter in the finance bill. And then, you know... So you said yeah. there shouldn't be retrospective uh, uh, taxation, so they... No, no I, I said Parliament had the right to frame legislation with retrospective effect. This is the right of parliament under the constitution, yeah. cannot be taken away, but the government of the day has to look at the implications okay. of the yeah. judgment yeah. or um, uh, change in judgment. We'll, uh, yeah, we will just take a small break here. Uh, uh, please uh, don't go away and uh, stay with us. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a very interesting conversation with the former Finance Minister, Mr. Yashwan Sinha, who is also the Chairman of uh, the Parliamentary Standing Committee, looking at a host of uh, reforms uh, which this government is trying to uh, push through. Sir, so you, you said that uh, a lot of changes are being uh, brought about in GST, in the DTC legislation, which, which, which you are not aware of. Uh, so now, so what will it take for, uh, uh, for the two sides to sit together, I mean the ruling party and, and the BJP and other opposition parties which are represented as you said in the standing committee and just just talk it across the table. We, it is not our most sacred national duty as opposition to bail out the government 
and I'll tell you very, very forthrightly and frankly, if the government is losing in Lok Sabha on a certain question, we are not going to come to their support. If the government goes, so be it. But short of that, our commitment to reforms remains. We are determined that uh, reforms should continue, that they should be made more people-centric. I am asking a simple question. But sir, here there is a click side contradiction hmm. here. I agree that your commitment to reforms uh, 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 remains. But when you say there is a, uh, as Mr. Gatkari also articulated, the BJP president, the breakdown of trust, then how do you articulate that commitment in actual, on, on the ground? Because today you see the global rating agencies are saying that we want to see reforms in India. And if, if they uh, cut down India to junk status, it will affect us. So there, there is a national interest involved, uh, where which BJP is also aware, Congress, everybody is aware. Are we in a worse situation than we were in 1991? No, of Ve course. Venuji, I am asking you this question. I was finance minister in the Chandrasekhar government in 1991. We kept on pleading with the Congress party, please allow us to present the budget because the, the, the country is in a severe crisis. Did they allow us to present the budget? So you you think know, that I, am, they, they I am I am I am a person with because you are the finance minister. Uh, there. Yeah, I am. I have great recollections. And if you are talking about or the Congress Party is talking about national interest today, how would they justify their action in 1991? You have you know? a, indeed a very long memory. I'm I sure. have a long memory, you know, and I can cite chapter and verse where they have given a go by to national interest. And now they are beating the drum of national interest. Both will not. Why did uh, uh, Dash Munshi, who were the chief VIP, stand up in Lok Sabha on the 17th of December uh, 2002 and say that uh, bringing FDI in uh, retail will be an anti-national step? Why did the Congress party stop me from bringing um, uh, FDI in insurance um, to up to 49%? They have committed all these sins. And today, they are turning to us and saying, this is all in national interest and BJP is opposing national interest. Mm -hmm. When they oppose, it is national interest in their favor. Mm -hmm. When they go back on their word, it is again national interest mm -hmm. that they are serving. This double speak will not work. But sir, do you uh, feel that there is a <coughs> general breakdown in consensus? Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. So, it is. so when will this repair? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I am telling you quite seriously. Elections are the only answer. Okay. If we want to make a fresh beginning at in economic sector, in other sectors, and want to build this country on the basis of reforms as consensus, then fresh elections is the only answer. I don't see this lack of trust or deficit of trust uh, being bridged as long as this government is around. So, quite do I, I, so are you suggesting that that uh, that we could? Uh, see fresh uh, elections, uh, uh, a premature general election sometime next year or something? Well, you know, as I told you, I, to me it appears that election, elections are the only answer to the present impasse. The government is not functioning. It is uh, taking decisions unilaterally and then seeking the support of political parties. This kind of approach will not work. The only approach which will work on economic reforms in this country, Venuji, is the Vajpayee approach. Mr. Vajpayee used to build consensus within the coalition and then with the Congress party. That's how we were able to carry out all these legislative changes. Do you think the reform in insurance bill would have gone through if we had not built consensus with the Congress? So there is another, um, I, I totally agree with what you said. Uh, NDA had a way of building consensus and it did uh, and pushed a lot of during your time and subsequently just one thing as finance minister. Now it is not just about the two main opposition parties, Congress and BJP. Uh, there is a joker in the pack. There is a third element which is this India against corruption which, which, has, which, which has stirred the melting pot uh, and uh, which seems to be taking uh, uh, you know, opinion in a different direction altogether. And, uh, Lately, they have talked about the way land use uh, in several states uh, from conversion of agriculture land into uh, for industrial use and other urban use, uh, how it is uh, happening and how there's a huge premium on land. Land is getting, real estate is getting commoditized. Uh, how do you see 
this campaign now i'll tell you where i'm coming from because he has attacked gadkari and and surely a lot of land has in in several states uh, a lot of land has been shifted from agriculture to other uses they they may not be illegal they may have been done under various rules uh, but there is a feeling that that land as a resource uh, is not being uh, reached to the people who require housing uh, you know uh, just as spectrum the same lodging coal and spectrum is it are these resources being reached out to the people land is a major issue yeah. i had said some 10 12 years ago in one of my budget speeches yeah. that we should prepare a long term land use policy exactly yeah long term means 50 years 100 years mm -hmm. look at the map of india and say where you want to go for minerals where you want to go for uh, uh, urban areas where you want to go for forest etc et it's like a mega master plan it's a mega master plan long term oh, oh, oh. and the principle which should govern that oh, oh. is that if it is good agricultural land oh, oh, oh. we will let it be oh, oh, oh. you know take coal for instance oh, 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 oh. coal is underground yeah now why is it that we have not gone for gasification of coal yeah. in a big way big way yeah, sure even if it involves mm -hmm. perhaps a larger outlay mm -hmm. or costs a little more mm -hmm. let's go for gasification of coal mm -hmm. so that you don't have to disturb mm -hmm. the uh, the the land as it is second why can't we give the assurance to all the tenants mm -hmm. that for minerals will take your land for 20 years 30 years mm -hmm. after which will return your land return your land yeah oh, you know sure. take out the mineral i think this idea was discussed uh, but this uh, this is an idea mm -hmm. which has to be implemented yeah yeah you know compensation is a major issue sir so a lot of these ideas have been discussed but somehow implementation doesn't well happen. we have the new land acquisition uh, bill coming oh, up yeah are you satisfied with the new land acquisition no, bill no i am not i am absolutely firmly convinced mm -hmm. that as far as the private sector is concerned we should the government should not acquire land from the private sector but the new bill does uh, give It's, government the one third two third okay. you know so if two third farmers agree then one third will be forced to sell their land so you saying that one third forcing will not work will not work because it will lead to it did not work in singur actually yes, so budhadev yes, bhattacharya yes. told us it did ah, not work there yeah. it didn't work and it will not work anywhere Yeah, yeah, and yeah. all of us will stand up in support of the tenant mm -hmm. who does not want to give his land. Okay, okay. You mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. you have leave the private sector to fend for itself. Okay. okay. Point number one. Mm -hmm. Point number two, mm -hmm. for government and for public sector, mm -hmm. for you know a great public purpose. Mm -hmm. If you want to acquire land, go and explain it to the people. Give them proper compensation. Give them livelihood. Give them uh, assurance of a uh, secured future. only then they will be prepared to part with their land otherwise they'll say jaan denge zameen nahi denge so sir the sense i get is that uh, really that that only a, a fresh general election will uh, really cool down things and a big and, and allow for a positive agenda to a fresh start, start. So and i lot I'll, of negativity in yeah, there right i'll tell you one thing you know this government in the final analysis when it is finished and gone and historians like you will be writing uh on the tenure of this government one thing will emerge and that is that they have done great disservice to the cause of economic reforms great disservice and that is why when i talk to my colleagues in politics not only in the bjp elsewhere in other political parties i find that their opposition to the reforms is far more uh, obdurate than it was before yeah sure i mean even the prime minister's own honorary economic advisor raghuram rajan uh, has publicly said that the upa2 really did not meet expectations on uh, on on supply side reforms at least uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us thank you venuji pleasure so that's all we have in this uh, edition uh, we'll be back soon thank you